and I'll keep admitting people as they filter in, but I think we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, so good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us um, for today's session. This is titled Putting Theory into Practice, um, and this is actually the seventh virtual workshop in the Rise Ohio series. So for those of you that have um, joined us in the past, uh, this should be familiar to you, but RISE Ohio is short for the Resilience Initiative for Southeastern and Eastern Ohio, um, and it is a U.S. EDA assistance to coal communities program led by Ohio University, Buckeye Hills Regional Council, and Omega. Um, so the program was really designed to provide technical assistance to communities impacted by coal-fired power plants and focused on opportunity zone planning, economic diversification, development education, and investment attraction. So my name is Katie Ward. Um, I'm a project manager with Steadfast City. Um, Steadfast City is an economic and community development consulting firm really focused on helping people develop better through a holistic approach geared toward converging the public, private, and philanthropic sectors. Um, some other familiar faces on the screen that you've seen throughout this series. Um, we've got Joel Glasscock and Allison Gray Gunston. Um, you probably met with them earlier, um, kind of in the outreach phase of this technical assistance and spoke to them about, you know, what type of development and resources you'd like to see in your communities. Steadfast has also partnered with Ray Daphner. He's the principal at Strategic Advisory and Investment Services on this technical assistance coordination. Um, so Steadfast was actually linked up with Ray through Opportunity Appalachia, and I'm sure, you know, many of you have worked with or met with Ray um, through that program. He's really a key member of their team. We're also privileged to have um, our two special guests today, Chris Cooley from Ozworks, as well as Matt McBride, um, and I'll make sure we give the, <laughs> you, you weren't blurry that time, Chris. Um, we'll make sure we give these, these guys a more proper introduction in a minute, um, but I just kind of want to lay out some basic information on the series before diving into our audience-driven discussion. So as you can see on this seminar schedule, we only have one more session left in the series, guys, just one more, and that's going to be in January. Um, and that's really going to be focused on taking all of the information that's been presented throughout all these sessions and kind of figuring out how to orient yourself into what your next step should be. Um, so Steadfast is going to be working with Omega and Buckeye Hills and Ray Daphner to kind of hopefully help these communities that have joined us on these calls to kind of figure out where to go from here and how to move forward utilizing OZ incentives. Um, and as always, we're not restricting access to anybody. So um, you can go ahead and share the meeting link for that January meeting. Um, to people inside or outside your organization, anybody that you think could benefit from the discussion. So again, if you've joined us for these for uh, the series up to this point, you're very familiar uh, with our FAQ system and our online resource page. Um, but if you do scan that QR code with your phone, it will take you to our interactive FAQ forum, and you can just directly submit any related questions, um, and someone from our team will answer it or find somebody that can answer it and get that reply to you as soon as possible. Um, we're then going to compile all of those FAQ questions um, into one FAQ document, and that will be uploaded into the resource folder, which can be accessed through the link on this slide. Um, so that link will take you to this page. You can see that screenshot there. And that's where we keep all the most up-to-date uh, resources pertaining to this webinar series. Um, so again, we have that webinar schedule with all the Zoom links. There's a listing of resources to kind of help you navigate the world of OZs and developments. Um, and then there's also a subfolder in there that has all of the past recordings from our presentations through, throughout the series. Um, so if you did miss one, you can go back and kind of uh, rewatch that and revisit and, and figure out what you missed. Okay, so now we can get into the good stuff. Um, so as mentioned previously, and as I think Buckeye Hills and Omega had advertised, today's session is really going to be driven by you all in the audience. Um, we wanted to bring in these two OZ practitioners that have the real life on the ground insight and experience when it comes to you know, forming opportunity funds and really navigating OZ regulations. So I know that um, establishing a qualified fund has been a big topic for the audience. So we wanted to create this setting for anyone that 
um, you know, has a question to ask that question and really receive some practical and relevant advice. Um, this is really different than kind of our past sessions. You know, there's not going to be any more PowerPoint slides or, you know, you know, stuffy presentations or anything like that. It really is just going to be opening up to you guys um, to really have this frank and honest discussion about OZs, about QOFs. It's a judgment-free zone. Um, you're among friends. Uh, so please feel free to, you know, send it in through the chat or take yourself off mute <clears throat> and really ask these panelists what you're thinking. Um, but with that, I would like to give a quick little intro to our two guests today. Um, we're going to start with Chris. Um, so Chris Cooley is a community builder. He is the CEO and co-founder of OzWorks Group, and that is an action-based online opportunity zone community that was launched in January of 21. So he and his business partners, Jimmy Atkinson's from Opportunity BB, who's actually one of our speakers back in July, um, and Ashley Tyson of OzPros created OzWorks Group to kind of fulfill the true spirit of the OZ legislation by democratizing access to OZ education while promoting deal flow to OZ communities on a national scale. So OzWorks Group is set up as a qualified opportunity zone business and Chris and his business partners funded the company with their own qualified opportunity zone fund. So he's, he's you know, walk the walk, talk the talk and OzWorks Group really fills this void um, in the OZ market by kind of bringing together all of those OZ stakeholders. And this is something that we've talked about throughout the series, you know, really how to build that team and bring those people together. But the goal of this online network is to really connect anyone interested in OZs with the knowledge and action steps that they need to execute OZ strategies. Moving on to Matt McBride, um, he is well, he was an independent commodity option trader um, and on the uh, Chicago Board of Trade. He actually told me he started there as a high school summer job being a runner in the summer of 88 um, and was there until March of 20 when they clo closed due to COVID. He and his family moved from Chicago to Tennessee um, to kind of undertake this, this new adventure where he could use the Opportunity Zone incentive as a catalyst. Um, so Matt decided to combine the OZ incentive with his longtime passion for outdoor recreation and adventure, um, specifically rock climbing, which is very, very cool, Matt. Um, so in Tennessee, um, Matt actually found a large track of land that was partially inside of an opportunity zone. Um, Matt had done some research and actually got in touch with Chris at OzWorks to learn how he could best structure the land acquisition as a qualified opportunity zone business. So he's now focused on developing this area as really this outdoor recreational paradise, um, including rock climbing, mountain biking, swimming, hiking, horseback riding. Sounds like, you know, all of that really exciting recreational outdoor stuff, He's he's got it planned. Um, but the Opportunity Zone incentive really helped Matt in making that decision to start a business um, with those local employment opportunities in rural Tennessee. So that's my quick little uh, introduction on these guys, or maybe not so quick, um, but I'm going to turn it over to Chris, and maybe you want to just kind of give us a little bit more insight as to, you know, who you are who you are, and why you're here. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, I really, Katie, appreciate you guys. First, let me uh, test this. Are, are you seeing me okay? Are you hearing me okay uh, in this business center without Wi-Fi that I ended up in? So far, so good. So good. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having us. Uh, I really appreciate the the the, the format. Um, in we we like to say not everything we do has to be presentation, right? Uh, in fact, we really like conversation. And so you know we can cater this dialogue to to any questions that come up in the chat. Um, as Katie mentioned, you know I'm, I'm one of the co-founders of OzWorks Group, and you know it's really important for us, especially at this stage, two years down the road. Uh, we've been growing you know, scaling sustainably for two years. Uh, we're over 265 members nationally, um, Matt being one of them, which is one of the reasons why I really wanted to invite him in. We have uh, made a real commitment to taking action and helping action be created inside of Opportunity Zones, especially in communities uh, that represent Opportunity Zones, because ultimately that's how this incentive is going to last, 
right? I mean, there's a sunset right now, and if it gets extended, there is a bill on the table to potentially extend it. It's going to be because people like you take action in these communities and that we actually have a platform to tell the stories from. Because there are a ton of communities in rural areas across the country that are doing really well and really impactful projects in opportunity zones, but they're not getting highlighted in national media or in storylines at all because in most cases and maybe some of you can relate to this i know matt can you're doing the work <laughs> right so to go search out one uh the irs can at irs and, and say you know expect them to come to your door and say hey do you not want to pay us taxes down the road like one it's not going to happen and two to have them say well okay if you don't here's all the instructions a really easy clear guide on how to do it and what you should do like that's not part of it either it's however many hundreds of pages of code that matt has read some of, if not most or all of. Um, so our whole goal was to create an environment, a community, uh, and a platform where you know education is critical and easy to understand, where you have peers like Matt who've been through it and done it, like myself. I mean, although we took this initiative to to launch a community and a network, like you know, myself and Jimmy and, and Ashley, we're we're in it. We we really were adamant about making this a practice what we preach model so that as we learn, we can share our knowledge and, and use what we know as a force multiplier in this national community. So um, so when we were talking, Katie, about doing a, a session, you know, I, I, I really was excited about the fact that you were going to let us just kind of jam and uh, talk about what's real and what, what needs to be done in order for this to last and in order for more projects to get up and off the ground. Um, economic development is is crucial, and I know the main metric in a lot of cases is is jobs. Well, starting operating businesses in opportunity zones is the way that jobs are going to get created. And, and it's great that we have these large, you know, developers and developments happening uh, in these areas, and that they will certainly create some residual jobs and and a, and a bit of impact. But ultimately, imagine a company that could hire 500 people set up as an opportunity zone business was going to benefit the investors in 10 years or more uh, based on the growth and, and again, a force multiplier. Uh, you know, these businesses aren't limited by floors and walls and property lines. Um, they can be expansive. And, and our group is an example of that on a smaller scale, right, where we're a remote company that we can grow exponentially. And so, you know, this is not to discredit real estate projects, but there's certainly, we all know, very lopsided nature to the, the industry so far in that the majority of the projects that have been invested in have been real estate. However, uh, if you're you know, a really savvy investor, you know that the real upside is in operating businesses. And so one of the things that we want to do is, is fulfill and, and, and grow that potential in areas like rural areas, because remote work is a, is a very, um, is, is, is where we're at, right? Like um, if you can create jobs in a remote company, then you can hire people in opportunity zones from all over. And uh, and that is truly impactful when dollars get spent in areas and you can create jobs. So um, so anyway, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, and I just want to um, kind of tee up Matt here because he is a shining example of what's possible when you do one of two things, two, two of two things. You, one, lead with a giving hand. He shows up. Um, and he shares his story and uh, he's become like the, you know, uh, let's call him an adjunct professor inside of Oswald's group by the School of Hard OZ Knox, right? And, um, and also he is, he participates. And so I, I, Matt's story, like, and Matt, I'll let you tell it in more detail, but, you know, he came in uh, through OZ Pros uh, having been set up in a qualified opportunity zone fund, his own fund and self-directed and came into our group and, and he showed up for like, I don't know, maybe three months. And we have all, every Friday we have a Zoom. And one day he and I got partnered in a breakout room. So we do these really interactive, um, supportive type environment, uh, online environment sessions. And he said, man, I think I'm done. I don't know if I can pull this off. And I said, in, I think in like a couple minutes, I was like, no, dude, do this, 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 and this. And, but confirm it with all of our experts inside of our community, the service providers. And then he did that and, and things took shape, right? And we did like a peer support where everyone was contributing, sharing their knowledge. So I was just, I'm so grateful that it worked out for you, Matt. And uh, I'll, I'll certainly let you share your story a little bit, but you know, we're here today to, to just 
speak very truthfully and openly and genuinely and, and um, about the OZ incentive and how you can do whatever you want <laughs> to make it happen, right? Because you can. Uh, and that there's a misconception that this is just for like, you know, the big guys, the big funds. Um, and and it's not it's not true. Uh, I mean, it is true that those are set up, but it's not that that's the only case scenario um, because we do have these supportive networks. So Matt, I'll kick it over to you, man. If you want to just, I don't know, spin off of any of those 500 things I just said, uh, feel yeah, free. Chris, I appreciate it, man. You know, I appreciate you. And Katie, thank you for having me. I appreciate being on here. I, I love talking about this stuff because I've been, like Chris said, sort of living and breathing since I moved to Tennessee and dove in. And initially, I didn't know the first thing about Opportunity Zones. I didn't know if it was something that I could do myself. It, to me, it just I just assumed it was something that uh, was bigger corporations, bigger businesses. And for an individual to access it seemed impractical. Um, I initially got introduced with Opportunity Zones by making a few investments just as an LP into bigger funds in 21. But then I started scratching my head thinking, you know, why can't I do this myself? I was looking at sort of in the middle of a uh, life transition with the leaving my career at Chicago after 30 years and thinking, what am I going to do? Maybe I'll just do some real estate, multifamily, something like that here. And I moved to Chattanooga, but uh, looking into it, I, I'm starting to go down this rabbit hole and I got, I got somehow or another connected with Chris and OZ pros where they kind of showed me that it was possible that I could possibly do a project as an individual. So I, I like to think of myself as like, yeah, the guy who I'm a one person business, you know, there's, I literally have, I'm not a company corporation or anything. I'm myself just a mom and pop kind of thing, or I'm starting a new business, but it was, it was an obvious uh, thing to do is to use the opportunity zone instead of to make that happen, you know, to go actually it was the mayor of uh, in Tennessee in a small town. When I was talking to him in Bledsoe County he said, you're coming from Chicago to rural Tennessee to start a business. Like what, you know, what's your problem, you know, what's going on, man. But it's like, well, honestly, if it wasn't for the opportunity zone legislation, I probably wouldn't be because it wouldn't have made sense. But with that, and once I started, I had OZ pros set me up. Um, I realized this there was a lot more to it than I thought. And it was something that to just do it myself was going to be very, very difficult. And I guess one of the reasons I'm here today is if there's anybody else in a similar situation thinking, is it possible? I mean, I'm, someone who I can answer questions or whatever of the experiences I've had trying to set it up. But like the reason I was on these zoom calls with Chris every week was because I'm, it was the only way for me to become informed. And I could, I could see where Chris started Osworks group thinking we need to have a community because you need to have a community to be able to talk to other people in this, having this experience. Or you, the only other thing you have is the 500 pages of regulations, which like Chris said, yeah, I tried to read it, but I mean, that stuff's, you know, it's kind of hard to digest it all. And even then you have questions, who are you going to talk to? You go to your neighbor, most people aren't into opportunity zones. So you needed kind of a, a group of opportunity zone people, which I found with Chris's group and it's been amazing. But yeah, so the long short of it is I'm starting, a, like Katie mentioned all the outdoor recreation, but it's really a hospitality business with glamping and geodesic domes where people will come and stay there in those adventure things will be sort of an attraction and so you know it's an exciting exciting business I, honestly i've gotten to meet so many local you, you can't even imagine leaving the city of chicago going to rural tennessee and the people i'm meeting and working with the people that live there and have lived there all their lives and the people i'm hiring to help me with my project is it's just been a life-changing experience that aspect of it alone and you know, and that, that's kind of where the opportunity zone legislation, where the rubber meets the road, I think, because the incentive is meant to drive employment in communities where it never would have been otherwise. So and I'm I'm definitely doing exactly that. Um, well, and I, I want to put a, I want to put a mark in this, what you're saying, Matt, because if if anyone who's listening to this is on an economic development agency or, or council or board, or anything that is driving jobs right or or investment into an area did you hear what matt just said he wouldn't have gone there without the opportunity zone incentive and he is able to do it as a small business or a small operator and there are hundreds of maps in this country if not thousands if not hundreds of thousands now i'm getting a little ridiculous here but let's let's just say there's hundreds right and you can cater to that type of entrepreneurial mentality with opportunity zones and you can draw someone like matt from chicago to 
to a rural area where he has a lifestyle that he wants to achieve. He can launch a business that he wants to as investment, like long-term investment incentive for him to do. And he can make a difference, right? And hire people and start to do things like that move the needle in your region. Like this is a story of success. And if we can manufacture and promote and highlight these areas to more people like Matt, then we are going to do exactly what this incentive intended. And, and for all the critics and, and the critique, it's justified. Like we haven't been able to do a lot of what we're talking about. Matt has been able to, he had to go, you know what, I'm motivated enough to just go do this. And whether someone's going to support me or not, I'm just going to go do it. And he found, you know, a place for, for support. Um, but how much more could we do if we had a bigger network of support for this type of thing? And there's groups out there that are doing a great job. Um, you mentioned Ray and Opportunity Appalachia and some of the other groups um, more regionally that are, that are really doing everything that they can to promote and get, generate excitement. Um, but I want to say this to like smaller regional economic development groups that, you know, if you just have like a little bit of gumption to, and you're ready to rock, um, people like Matt can show up and build their amazing glamping ideas and do all kinds of good things in your region and in your area. So, um, so that, that's one of the reasons, Katie, that I, that I appreciate uh, you bringing us on is that, you know, let's talk about this stuff. <laughs> we don't have to shy away from it. Like <clears throat> entrepreneurs like us, we're ready to go and we're going to do it anyway. Uh, it would be great to get a little more support, right, Matt? Like, you know, uh, versus love, love the mayor, that. whoever said, who was like, who was like, why are you here? Like, yeah. shouldn't he be like, hey, come on in. Like, wait, do you have more friends? You right. know, so. <clears throat> and, you know, honestly, one of the things that surprised me was the, the local community where I'm at they want to work. These people want to work, but there's not enough businesses in the rural area. There's just not enough businesses. But I showed up and it's like, you think I'm a little business and it's almost like everyone, there's this one little community uh, market, gas station, convenience store where the, the, you know, gossip central of the town or whatever. And I go in there and everybody in that town wants to work. They all want to be in this project. It's, it's, People talk about it's hard to find work these days. Where I'm at, it's not hard to find work. These people are, they are begging to work on these jobs. It's unbelievable. And I've met people that I now consider friends that are helping me work out there. And it's just an unbelievable population. Well, and I'm ready to go visit. Like once you got, <laughs> remember there was a point where you were like, I think I'm going to do this glamping thing. Check out these domes. And yeah. everybody on our call, we had like 30 people on our call. They were like, when should we come? Like, when right. can we visit? It's amazing. Like what a cool idea. And, and not a huge, like, you know, um, ground up development project with multi-use everything. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is something that you love, that you care about, and you're bringing that love and passion and compassion with you to the project. And, you know, it's, it's not to say that those, the big ground up developments are bad or negative. Like, there's a place for all of this. We're, we want to create an ecosystem. And especially in rural areas, like, let's start with projects like math. You know, Katie, did you want to like chime in? I, I also don't want to get too far down, like, uh, you know, standing on a, and, and preaching here. Uh, no, you're there, fine. there are some nuts and bolts that we can help share. You guys are great. Um, I'm not seeing anything in the chat right now. So just a reminder to everybody out there, go ahead and you can send it to either everyone or send it to me um, as the host. Um, but go ahead and pop those questions in there. Um, but just to kind of get the conversation, you know, kicked off here. Um, Matt, you, you mentioned, you know, being part of that network, um, and it's really about who you can get linked up with and who you know, and, and you know, so can you tell me what it's, what these folks should look for as far as building a team, you know, what's that experience they need to kind of have in their, in their wheelhouse as far as, you know, who, who they need to be linked up with to really kind of get this process kicked off? You know, I... I don't mean to sound so biased, but with, like with Ozworks Group, that I don't know of another organization that's that's like helping individuals understand and start OZ funds. I'm sh I'm sure the bigger companies have their own legal teams and whatever that are, help them navigate those waters, and they spend less time individually worrying about it. But for someone who's doing a smaller business, and you you really just need a network of people who who are understanding and engaged in opportunity zone legislation, and because they're the one thing I learned when I started going down it, that if I tried to do it alone, I definitely would have 
crossed a red line along the way where it would have invalidated my entire project. There were things that that I just didn't understand that I was able to speak about out loud in our groups that we have with Chris and uh, say, I'm looking at doing it this way or that way. And every, I was able to talk to several people who were very knowledgeable to help guide me to say, you got to make sure you do this. There's a lot, you know, there's working cap, I, like Chris says, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole unless you guys want me to, but working capital, safe harbor and compliance and asset tests. And there's a lot to it. It's not just, I'm going to open my opportunity zone fund and it's going to, it's going to go. You have to stay compliant and understand the rules. And I, you know, I need, I needed a group of people. So yeah, that's, there, there needs to be a, a network of people involved in the opportunity zone. And, and Chris is trying to do that with Osworks group and they're doing an amazing job. But other than that, I, you know, I'm sure there's other ways, but yeah, I don't know. People need to be engaged. Katie, did, did you want to talk, do you want to talk specifically about like setting up a fund? I mean, I know we, t we titled this as like a 201. And so I'm just, I, I mean, and maybe people in the chat can add, um, maybe they can just add like what their roles are, what their organizations are doing. Like, are, are you small business? Um, are you starting a fund? Are you an economic development? Like, I would just be curious who's out there and we can speak specifically to like your, the value proposition, the challenges, like what's needed. Um, you know, let's make it interactive. Otherwise, you know, Matt and I will just ramble for three hours and, you know, make it, Hopefully there is a question that popped yeah, up we, here. We did get uh, something pop into the chat um, from Danielle. It says, please keep talking. So that's a good sign. Um, <laughs> I didn't even know small businesses <laughs> like Matt could, stop could take advantage of OZs. I think I heard that a part of Matt's business slash rec area is in an OZ. Can you talk more about that? How much is in slash out? How does that work? How much has to be in to qualify? What do you do with the rest? I'm a real novice here to listen and learn about a topic that is super confusing to me. <laughs> it's uh, confusing to a lot of people, Danielle. <laughs> can can That's I just why we jump got in these because guys here today? <laughs> Danielle, you just hit the you literally hit on one of the hot button issues of my my experience to where I wasn't sure I was going to be able to move forward. Early on, when Chris referenced the time he and I were in a breakout room, that was the exact reason when I said, I don't know if I can do this because all my land's not in an opportunity zone. And he said, whoa, whoa, slow down. Let's see. And uh, we went through to find, I bought a piece of land that was, it was 450 acres, but only 95 of it was opportunity zone. So the question was, was, can I, you know, 95 acres is still 95 acres in opportunity zone. That was more than, you know, more than enough, but I didn't know how to separate it. Well, long and short of it, it was, I, I was guided to separate the non-opportunity zone land into my personal name and keep the 95 acres of opportunity zone into my QOZB business. And, and that's the way we structured it. But again, that was a, that was like to navigate that and understand what to do with that was not something I could have figured out myself. I do know that in the legislation, you need to, if you have 51% of your land in an opportunity zone, then the whole thing would qualify. But unfortunately with my 95 355 scenario, it didn't work out that way. So I needed to do, I needed to jump through extra hoops to make it isolate just the opportunity zone aspect of it. But yeah, Chris, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure if you have 51%, if you have 51 out of 100 acres in an opportunity zone, the whole 100 acres would qualify. Yeah. And, and I, um, I don't want to get like necessarily super in the weeds unless, unless people want us to, um, because there's a bunch of different you know, compl Matt referenced compliance. We talk a lot about compliance because um, it's, it's, it's required. <laughs> it's not optional. Um, and so, you know, you got to be ready to go down that path and do a little bit of extra work with a huge reward on the back end uh, for your investors or, or if you are an investor as the investor. Um, I would recommend, it was a Danielle, if, if you're a beginner and if there's any beginners out there, um, feel free to go to our YouTube page. I don't, because I'm on my phone, I, I can't type in all the links and stuff, but um, just type in Osworks group. And I think there's a playlist there that says like top 10 resource videos or something like that. And you'll see Ashley Tyson, like right at the top, there's like a five minute overview of, um, of, of OZ like cheat sheet that they have. And if you're just looking to understand opportunity zones, that's an incredible, just quick resource. Talks about how you use capital gains and some of the, you know, it mentions, I think, some of the asset tests, which is like what we really wanted to do. And Matt's a, a great uh, example of this is create a ladder that you could climb. 
So you can start by just getting like a general education. And then when you're ready, move up to this next step, like, you know, come in, be part of some peer support networking groups and just start to get your feet wet. Because otherwise, like Matt, I mean, I commend you, man. You like, you just went for it and you came in at like step 17. Uh, and then like, we went back down to, to one and like worked back up and got to five and then back down to four and then went up to 10. And, you know, so um, we wanted to just create a really clear path. And so that, that YouTube channel is designed to use some of our partners videos and, and create content because yes, Danielle, you can be an operating business and, um, and be part of this incentive as well. So, um, so yeah, I mean, and, and what were some of the other questions, Katie? There were, so you, Matt mentioned the land. Yes, there are different asset tests, so you have to be in a fund, um, you know, in a certain way, <laughs> uh, and you got to be ready to check some of some 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 boxes. But um, you guys there? Can you hear me? Yep, yep. I'm reading. I'm reading through some more I, chats I, here. I had a mal I had a malfunction. Um, yeah, I guess Zoom on your phone when someone calls you it just shuts everything down. So my phone went blank because someone was calling me. Anyway, uh, are there other? Uh, was there? Did I did I miss something there in the last ten seconds? Um, it looks like we got another chat. I think you hit all of the key points in Danielle's original question. Um, Danielle, if you have more, if you need more clarification, just send it in the chat. Um, we got and Katie, another. Katie, um, uh, if if you don't mind, um, if people have questions and, and maybe Matt's open to this too. I can speak for myself. Um, just put my email, chris at osworksgroup.com in the chat and, and people who are at any stage can just email me and we'll make sure we point you in the right direction and provide. We've got all kinds of resources and tools that we can we can give you for free and, and some paid and there's just a lot of different um, opportunities and options to get you into that ladder I was talking about. Okay, I just sent Chris an email and then I did pop in the Ozworks YouTube channel as well as that interactive um, map and Matt just shared his email. Um, Susan says, I think it would be Did helpful. Just... Go ahead. Yeah, go, go ahead. I, I think I saw the same thing you were just going to mention. Um, she said, I think it would be helpful to hear more about Matt's project. Um, Susan says she's the director of a nonprofit that purchased a building. Um, to help provide needed lodging and attract herbal small companies, um, as well as be part of economic revival. So many buildings are following apart, are falling apart. Um, she thinks that the areas in her zone, just double check on that map, Susan, um, to, to make sure um, if it's in that qualified zone. But Matt, if you wanna maybe elaborate a little bit more on your project, I think that would be really helpful to Susan. <laughs> Yeah, and Susan, I, I would definitely recommend looking at that map. I've spent probably hours looking at the map. And one of the things that originally I, I looked at the, the city of Chattanooga because there was an opportunity zone near there. Before I decided on a project I'm doing, you know, I was just looking for, in my mind, I, I really wanted to do a, an opportunity zone project of my own. Um, and so the map is the map is really where you got to start. You're talking about the um, the place where the buildings need they're falling apart. I mean, I would I would look at those addresses. You could type those addresses and in write into the maps to see if those would be a situation that would qualify. Once you find a project that isn't an opportunity zone and does qualify, then you know, long and short of it, without getting too technical, is you know you need a QOF, which is a qualified opportunity fund, then a QOZB, which is qualified opportunity zone business. Um, the fund is usually set up as a partnership, you know, um, but you you need to have. Hey Matt, can I rate. can I try me? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I was just going to make sure you mentioned the capital gains and, and, and maybe just to tee up that, like you are an investor that is also investing in your own deal, your own project. I think it's really important to note that because you have the gain, you got interested as an investor first, right? So just yeah. maybe start at that point in the story and how you got yeah, into like doing your own project and why. Right. And backing up because that was the case. Basically as my, my previous career being a trader, I naturally came in, left that with capital gains that I was trying to look, what can I do with these gains? I could pay the taxes and then take the after-tax money to go start a business, or I could use the qualified opportunity fund, which like I said, originally, I first, I did invest in other people's qualified opportunity funds, but then I thought, well, why not invest in my own qualified opportunity fund? The hard part was figuring out how to set it up, but you do have to set up a fund. 
and then use that fund to fund your business. Um, and that's the way the structure most, I think it, there's times where it's not Chris, you could say if I'm wrong, but usually you set up a qualified opportunity fund and then fund funds, the qualified opportunities own business. And one of the reasons why you really want a qualified opportunities own business is that gives you a lot more flexibility than just the fund. Meaning the, once you have a qualified opportunities own business, there's a lot of rules with this working capital safe Harbor that gives you time. Essentially you can buy yourself 31 months of time to where you have this flexibility to decide what exactly you're going to do. And it's more flexible than, say, for someone, for instance, that wants to do a 1031 exchange, you have to identify a property in 45 days and you have to place it in 180 days and that's it. Whereas in a qualified opportunity zone business, you have 31 months to actually uh, get the funds placed. So it gives you more flexibility in that regard. Chris, would you agree on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the only thing that I have to add is, you know, I have my own uh qualified opportunity zone fund story and it's different than yours uh you know i didn't come from a, um you know I'm, i come from an entrepreneurial background i've launched a bunch of companies um in fact a lot of people who are generating gains have are selling companies right and so they know they don't necessarily know real estate they know building a business and so you know there's there hasn't been really a landing place for them other than to do their own their own deal their own qzb projects and so um, that's what's happening, right? And and we're we're here to support that. You know, I actually manufactured again. I had a, a property sale that didn't fall in a, in a timeline to be able to manufacture or to be able to have a gain in the right way that I could use for for an OZ. And with my stock accounts, it just none of it worked out right. So what I did is I have a consulting company. I actually sold a fraction of that company to an unrelated party in order to generate a gain because I knew I wanted to work with Ashley and Jimmy to, to, to show that this operating remote operating business could work under the umbrella of the opportunities on incentive. So that's how, you know, if, if you're a consult, I saw somebody with a consultant out there, if you have an LLC, an established company, you, and, and you don't have any other way of, of, of creating a gain, but you want to get in on the opportunity zone as an investor, you can, you can sell company property stock, <laughs> right? You can sell uh, memorabilia, <laughs> like, just talk with a CPA. Oh, I should, this should be a disclaimer at the beginning of this. We're not CPAs or, or, <laughs> or attorneys, right? Um, but we've been through it. And, and what I find is that so many maps of the world know more than uh, a total swath of CPAs and attorneys across the country. Again, not to put them down or anything. This is really complicated stuff. You have to almost be obsessed with it, right? And, and believe in it uh, to want to dive that deep. But I mean, Matt, you've had some, not to put anybody on the spot, but I know you've had some horror stories with attorneys and CPAs that just didn't know what they were talking about and tried to tell you not to do this, right? Where a group of people who have like, you know, no CPA experience told you that or, or, or legal experience were like, hey, no, we did it this way. We did it this way. And then you went back into our community and checked it with real OZ experts. It wasn't like you're just relying on, you know, people's word. And guess what? They were right, weren't they? <laughs> I was told so many times that you're going to make a red flag, uh, your tax return. Why? Don't go down this road. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, look, I'm not, I, I didn't invent the rules. I didn't write the legislation. I'm playing by the rules, but I'm going to educate myself so that I know the rules and I know the legislation and I'm going to follow those rules. I'm not doing, I'm, you know, it's like if there's a game and these are the rules of the game, I just need, you need to be educated about the rules of the game. But yeah, it, the first, the gut response, it seems of a lot of people was just, you know, risk don't do it but it's I, that's fear not, of the unknown yeah, right? right it's fear, fear of the unknown, the unknown. Yeah. and then, unless you unless you read the code uh and you really want to get involved uh you're just going to go oh you know what it's not for me or you know it, it won't work for me the reality is that there it's built with 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 gray area so that it is for everyone there is a huge misconception out there that you know big fund or a big you know, operation is the only one that has access to this. But the reality is that, you know, the reason that they have access is because they have deep pockets and they have a deep, deep resource pool, right? They have teams behind the scenes that will read all the code, all their legal team. And so it's like, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. They're, they're playing the game too, right? So we wanted to be able to make this more accessible for people like Matt and individuals who wanted to do this. And myself, like I wouldn't have been able to access it if I didn't know Jimmy and Ashley and, and then create this network around it. So I'm super grateful um, because now I can build a company where I put in a very nominal amount of money 
And in 10 years, I have the potential to grow that, <clears throat> excuse me, multiple X and exit without paying tax, capital gains tax on the appreciated value of that. That is a huge, I, I mean, I could potentially retire off of this business deal in 10 years. That is a, that is a Roth IRA on steroids, right? And, um, and, and it's a 1031 exchange. What did Ashley say? It's like 1031 and Roth or something had a beautiful bait. Yeah, yeah, like, right. This is the opportunity zone incentive. <laughs> you know, so it's like, like, and, and someone was telling me a financial advisor the other day, really, really high profile financial advisor said, it should be a crime for financial advisors not to be able, not to share this with their clients that have capital gains. Yeah. Because just because you don't know enough about it, right? Like, I mean, you want to be careful there too, but just, I'm, I, I'm very passionate about it because I want to see the, 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 the flow of capital move into these communities more. Um, and I, I really believe we can make it happen. Yeah, I see Chris's passion every day. It's inspiring and it helped him inspire me to become passionate. Um, you know, and I <clears throat> honestly, the reason they wrote the legislation for a reason. And it was these there's people that are that want jobs and they don't have them. And they're sort of steering business activity in that direction. And that's why that's the whole reason this legislation came about. And I honestly, it, I, it makes me happy every day when I go do the job that I'm trying to do and I'm employing people and I see them enthusiastic to work and giving them jobs that they wouldn't have had otherwise. And there's so many more of them that I hope to be employing over the, I, I plan to do this as a 10 year, you know, the opportunity zone is a 10 year run. And that's, I plan on doing this for the next 10 years of my life. And, you know, I, I expect to be employing many, many people in uh, Tennessee. So that's, you know, that's what the legislation was there for. And it's, so it's a win-win. I think it's a, it's really just like you say, Chris, is being aware of, aware of the, of what it is and what what it's meant to be in the reg regulations yeah. and it's not as daunting as it may seem once you get involved it's just it's kind of fun actually so i like it yeah especially when you have people to like commiserate with and talk to and 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 brainstorm like a part of this network has become like a brain trust right like these people like matt are just so inspiring like he said incredible to be around um but uh, Katie, I know this is like kind of a small group. I mean, do people want to chime in and just say like where they're at and we could just like for the next 15 minutes kind of do like a group session and help people get to wherever they want to go or do you yeah. have a different agenda? If, I don't want to like- If anybody wants to them. either, you know, chime in through the chat or you can even take yourself off mute, that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if there's any other questions or, you know, you just want to throw your idea out there and just see where it sticks um, or at least what your background is. And, and you know, maybe these guys could give you a little bit of insight. Um, sure. Can you Don't guys hear me? There we go. We got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. OK, awesome. well, I, I, I took a look at the map and Pomeroy is definitely in the green zone, right, which is indicating that it's in the. Opportunity zone, am I correct? Pomeroy, Ohio. I, I, I would mean, search it depends on what my address. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say, Chris? I don't know. It yeah, if like you have a specific address. Because it could be a zone and only specific addresses. Work? Yeah, so the way that this works is is that you, you're you going to want to plug a specific address into that map because sometimes a one address might fall outside of that opportunity okay. zone um, in a city. So it's not just like a whole city. It's broken down by census tracts data, which is okay. which potentially is going to complicate things when this goes up for extension okay. <laughs> because there's a new census out. Um, but it's um, all based on the previous census. Okay, great. Um, I so, mean, it looks like, a, mm -hmm. I, sorry to interrupt, but it does look like okay. a portion of uh, Pomeroy is in an OZ. Um, I'm just yeah. not sure where that line sits as far as where the where the town is. Right. Okay. Well, I'll certainly dive in deeper. Thank you. Um, but I, you know, yeah. so like a hypothetical scenario is you, it, if a property is in the opportunity zone and, you know, from what I'm getting, you set up this fund, you can attract investors for your business project. And then from there, um, that helps you gain investment money. And then what you're saying is, it changes the tax code for your business once you're up and running. I mean, am I getting like the the basic concept? Because it seems like from the incentives, it, it's going to be easier to attract investment in your project. 
let me let me ask a quick question. So potentially, there's a couple of little pieces that we got to clarify in there. Um, but your your location, do you own this property then? Well, I mean, I um, our or we're a nonprofit organization, so I'm not sure mm -hmm. that you know we would specifically benefit. But I know of others who would like to invest in the town itself and kind of grow mm -hmm. this network of companies that support um, an herbal industry. And so I'm trying okay. to understand it so I can, you know, better communicate the opportunities um, for those that are looking to join our herbal community that, you know, want to start herbal businesses. And I see a lot of buildings that have the potential to do manufacturing, um, processing, and that then supports the farmers that are growing these um, herbal plants. So mm. these are things that I'm trying to kind of put together. And I think, you know, tourism, I mean, all, all these things kind of um, spiral out from this. So um, currently, yeah. you know, I have a friend who is looking to, you know, purchase and, and create our biggest issues that we have no place for people to stay, right? So how do we attract um, people to do more Airbnbs or a bed and breakfast? Um, so looking at, you know, what those opportunities are and how to communicate those opportunities to others that are looking to invest in the area. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's great. So so if you're looking to have people invest in your area, right, it has to be attractive to investment. So there's a couple of different things that need to happen there. Like you have to have a deal that can grow and scale, right, and be, be – um, be amplified in that way uh, financially, right? So even if you're looking at a, if you're looking at a building to develop, like uh, a real estate investor is going to look at the the returns on that investment, right? So, um, but just to clarify, so if you're looking to attract capital, you do not need to set up a qualified opportunity zone fund. The fund is actually for the investor. So the investor who, like Matt or like me who generates capital gains has to put those gains into a vehicle called the Qualified Opportunities on Fund. That fund then has a certain amount of time to deploy that capital into a Qualified Opportunities on Business, which would be one of the buildings or a business inside of that zone that you're looking at. So that's, that's, the, that's the basic gist of like from me from an investor, if I'm looking to put capital in your city, um, I need to start there. Now, if you're looking to attract business or, or attract that capital, you need to put together a plan. So like Matt, you know, you and I can speak to this, right? We're not just going to go like buy up a property in an opportunity zone because it's in an opportunity zone. It still has to be a good deal. So one of the things that we say is opportunity zone doesn't make a bad deal a good deal. Still needs to be a really good deal. So if you came to me with a plan and said, hey, I have this like uh, tiered agriculture, indoor growing aquaponics, opportunity, there's a market for it, and you've got it all designed just like a like a pitch deck, you know, and it's going to make X return over this amount of time, and I need 150000 to start my first, you know, 1,000 square feet, um, and it's going to grow this much in the future, and here's a building in the opportunity zone. Now I'm listening a little more, right, and we're going to create X amount of jobs, and this is what it's going to be, and here's our five-year plan, this is what it's going to make in five, and then the ultimate thing is with opportunity zones, any property or business that I invest in has to be held, that investment has to be held for 10 years or I don't realize any of the benefit. So um, the business has to make sense over a 10 year hold as well. Um, there are ways to get out early and things, but um, I won't get into that in great detail right now. Um, but does that, does that help? Yeah, that's, that's very helpful. And I guess, you know, one other quick question is, um, for those in the Buckeye Hills um, area, how, what is the network of, of people that we can connect with? And as far as a community kind of, like you guys talked about, that was so helpful for you. Like where, who are the individuals that are, um, or the resources that we should be connecting with for our region? Yeah, I definitely think reaching out to um, Kate Dunn at Buckeye Hills is going to be um, kind of your starting point. Okay. Uh, and I'm also going to um, share the resource link 
um, the drive link. I just share that in the chat. And there you're going to find a few things. One of them is we have a resource page. Um, and that includes a lot of local and national um, contacts and links and, and just resources that can help you, you know, get your footing and figure out, you know, who you need to talk to. Um, and then also, um, if you look in that recordings folder from our past presentations, um, I would recommend maybe taking a look at session number three. It was um, the one that I believe we had uh, Jimmy do back in July. Um, and he kind of laid out just opportunity zones one-on-one -on -one and gave just a really great um, high level and more detailed breakdown of the regulations and just kind of the basics of this is what it is and this is how it works. Um, so I think that was session number three um, would be really helpful to review too. But I think all of the sessions would be helpful to review too. But um, there's other more specific topics in there if you want to dig into that. Okay, great. Katie, Thank you. Would it be appropriate? Would it since there's a question about uh, raising capital, would it be appropriate for me to drop in a little brief announcement about our accelerator? It's free uh, to apply. I think that would be um, great. Yeah, I, I think, you yeah. know, just based off on the group today, I think that would be really helpful. So so please go ahead yeah. and, and share a yeah. little bit on that. So, so part of um, what we've been dreaming up for the last two years now is uh, an, an access and a bridge between OZ projects and OZ capital. It's been one of the biggest hangups uh, that this incentive has seen because uh, we have people who aren't speaking the same language and are never in the same rooms together. And I use rooms in air quotes because we built virtual online rooms. So we're gonna be doing a, an online accelerator initiative starting in January. It's gonna be a 12-week course. It's taught by every module, it's a weekly um, module, taught by an OZ expert across the country. And we have $3 million in OZ investment uh, secured right now. We're probably gonna have more next week. That is just designated by a couple of private investors that really wanna see the, the spirit of this incentive fulfilled and also need to make OZ investment deals. So the example that I just used of like, hey, bring me a good deal, uh, that they, they, they want to see that. Uh, and so, you know, we, we're moving dollars, but we're doing it in a way through education. Um, I bring this up because uh, ending November 3rd uh, is a online application. Those same investors that have the capital ready have also underwritten 30 scholarships for anyone who wants to participate. There's a, there is an application form and we will be reviewing all of them. But um, if anyone wants to apply, it's osworksgroup.org slash accelerator and um yeah and, and and you have till november 30th to be um put into that pool of people so I, i'm happy to answer questions about it but um it's it's really exciting because we have it has been part of our vision from day one two years ago and just recently we we put together the the framework for all of this and i'm just i'm really really happy to have um you know quote unquote small dollar projects get visibility and and potentially connect with real capital um and we're going to be putting together these on a rolling basis but this is the first um the the first we did a pilot a, a year ago we've got some really incredible technology artificial intelligence uh technology that we're using that backs all this and um and yeah and, and i think it's just a wonderful opportunity for people to get involved um in this sort of like ground up build and also even if you don't do an oz project you're going to be working with people who are going to be able to look at your deals investors who can talk to you about what an investor actually looks for and how um how to get money <laughs> which is what every small business really needs um in the early days especially so um so okay, thanks katie yeah I mean, and i, I, I went ahead and that. i dropped that accelerator link into the chat as well um Thank but you. it looks like we are getting near the end of our time here um, so again, just wanted to throw up the steadfast contact info. Um, but again, you know, utilize that resource link, utilize that FAQ. Um, if you have any specific questions, you know, we shared uh, Chris and Matt's email. So you know, feel free to reach out and bother them too. I'm sure they're they're happy to help. <laughs> <you>. <laughs> it's never a bother. Never a bother. We love it. Thank but you. It's it's really been a pleasure hearing from you you guys today. We really appreciate it and. This was a fun um, format, and I, I think this I think we helped the the people that joined us today.
Um, so with that, I just want to thank everybody for, for logging on today. Um, again, special thanks to Matt and Chris um, for kind of shedding some, some insight and some firsthand, you know, really practical experience on this. I think that's something that, you know, doesn't get out a lot. You know, it's usually just, you know, regulatory, just by the book kind of stuff, not like, hey, this is how you can actually, you know, get stuff done. Um, so that was really great. Um, with that, I just um, want to encourage I just want to encourage people to like know that there's like resources available so that if this is, is exciting to you, it's there. Like, and that's one of the, you know, obviously Matt has been there and done that and he's a resource to anyone on this call as well, but he's also an example of what's possible. So um, thanks Matt. And I just want to say thank you, Katie. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. No, you're fine. That's all I have. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a great day and um, stay warm if you're someplace cold like I am. Thanks, Katie. Chris, thank you very much. Great talking with you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care.